Time for tonight's rewrite. It is hard to imagine a more profound breach of public trust than what happened here. So said federal judge Sarah Vance yesterday in what the New Orleans Times Picayune reporter Brendan McCarthy called a scathing soliloquy at the sentencing of one of the New Orleans police officers involved in the Danziger Bridge massacre in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. There is indeed no more profound breach of public trust than police officers sworn to serve and protect becoming tormentors, torturers, and even murderers, as a gang of them did when they found a few unarmed, utterly innocent African-American men on the Danziger Bridge that day. New Orleans police officer Michael Hunter was given the maximum sentence yesterday after pleading guilty to obstruction of justice and failing to report a crime, the crime he was involved in. James Brissett, 17, was killed by gunfire from the police while on the bridge. Ronald Madison, 40 and mentally disabled, was killed by police shotgun fire. The officers falsely arrested this man, Lance Madison, initially claiming that he shot at police. Several officers have now confessed that he was framed. A New Orleans police sergeant sprayed assault rifle fire at wounded civilians when it was absolutely clear they had posed no threat to anyone. Appalling perversion, savagery, a moral outrage, sickeningly brutal. That is what Judge Vance called it yesterday. Before his sentencing, Officer Hunter said that he too fired his weapon at unarmed civilians but hit no one. Nothing more than his bad aim distinguishes him from the officers who accurately shot to kill. In fact, most police bullets fired on duty miss their targets. It is the decision to fire that matters more than the luck or bad luck that determines where the bullets end up. Michael Hunter had no intention of ever telling the truth about this case. He and his police buddies beat the rap in state court, and it was only when federal prosecutors closed in on him that he came forward to admit the obvious in an attempt to reduce his inevitable sentence. Your decency is slow in coming, said the judge, and it came with strings attached. It is hard to find you very sympathetic. This story contains horrible particulars never known before, but sadly contains no fundamental surprise for African Americans. This, all too often, is their experience of police work in America. Most of white America experiences police work only by watching men in makeup with fake badges and fake guns on network television cop shows. The reality is police shoot and kill unjustifiably every year. The reality is their victims are wildly disproportionately African American and always have been. I wrote the first book that tried to bring this problem to national attention 25 years ago. Much has changed since then, and too much has stayed the same. What is still true is that most police cover-ups of these cases succeed. The truth is never known. What is also true is that white America and black America experience these stories differently. White America considers every one of them a rare aberration that has never happened before and will never happen again. Black America knows they are only learning the details in the latest chapter in a continuing saga of the worst kind of injustice. Police officers acting as police officers, prosecutors, judges, juries, and executioners in the instant they willfully decide to unjustifiably end the life. I'm not talking here about the totally justifiable uses of deadly force used by police officers. Any, any police officer who genuinely believes his or her physical safety is threatened has the right and, yes, the responsibility to use deadly force, and I fully support them in each one of those cases. This was not one of those cases. I was selfish and chose my career over my family 
and made some horrible decisions, said Officer Hunter yesterday at his sentencing. I apologize for not having the moral courage to do the right thing from the beginning. Apology not accepted. I would like to be able to rewrite Michael Hunter's statement into something more meaningful, something profound, but there are situations for which there are no words. There are some things for which an apology will never be enough. Michael Hunter is to report to the Bureau of Prisons on March 14th. He must do his time. He must testify honestly in upcoming trials about the conduct of his partners that day, and he must make every day of the rest of his life a living apology for what happened on the Danziger Bridge.